Okay, so in this video, we're going to be going over how to create custom stud wall types. So Revit does have studs when they when you first download Revit, but they're not very good. So uh, in order to find a solution, I decided to just create stud types from scratch. Um, so they're very simple to make. They don't take a lot of time. And if you have any questions, I'll be try to cover everything I can in this video. Uh, they're good for parametric modeling. So if you're creating assemblies for fabrication, they're very easy to stretch. They, they like to attach to levels and so you can easily stretch them, they'll auto update and you can calculate lengths and counts with them as well. So um, there's a lot of value in that for anybody who does do fabrication. So to start, we're gonna go to the big blue R here and we're gonna go to new and family. And we are just going to start with a generic model. So it's easy to just start with a generic model because, you know, we can change any of the actual categories or factors within this model. So we'll start with that. So we get our green crosshairs here, which is pretty standard with a generic model or any model for that matter. So what I like to do is I like to start by creating my reference planes uh, and then modeling afterwards. So we're going to start by doing the base layout of this stud. So we have our four, four lines here and then we're just going to do some equality constraints so it will stay centered. So we'll just do that here. And then we'll also add two parameters. So in a stud, there's a web and a flange. So we're going to need a web parameter. We'll call this uh, six inches. It's pretty typical. I'm just going to change my units real quick. And we're going to do this one. Sorry, we'll make first. We'll make this a parameter, so we'll call this one flange, and that's also a type parameter. And we'll make this 1.625 inches, which is one and five eighths. So next, we'll create two more reference planes for the lip of the stud. So we'll add those in. And the nice thing about these is they can actually be the same parameter, so we don't have to create one for the top and bottom. So we'll call this lip. And we'll make that 5 eighths. Okay, so we have a, I guess, a layout, a reference plane layout. Go to our front view. So for anyone who does do fabrication, usually you do use uh, a cutback for your studs if you order your studs pre-cut. So the benefit of creating your own stud type is you can actually create a full length of the wall that you're creating, and you can also create cutbacks for it. So um, We'll, we'll just draw, so this will be our overall length, and then we'll have two more reference planes, which is this one and this one here, that we can use to calculate our cutbacks. So we'll need a dimension for that, we'll need a dimension for this, and we'll need one more for the full length. So we'll name this one just length. And this one will actually be an instance property. And the reason we're doing this is because we actually want it to be able to stretch based on wherever we decide to use this stud. So and then we'll switch this to uh, make this 72 inches. And now we'll add our names to our cutbacks. So we'll just call it cutback. Now that the one downside with this is you may want a different cutback on the bottom and the top really depends you just have to label those separately like name it 
cut back bottom, cut back top, doesn't, whatever works for you. Uh, I'm just gonna have one cut back, so we'll, uh, I'll just make it simple. So we'll make them the same. And we'll make this, uh, I don't know, one eighth is usually pretty typical. Okay, so now we have now we have our actual layout and our plan for how we're gonna lay this stud out. So we'll go to reference plane, and then we'll create an extrusion. And uh, later on in this video, possibly in the next video, we're going to create a fine detail view which will have the actual bends of the of the stud. And uh, in the it, but just in this video we're just going to do square edges so um, just to make it simple and quick for now so we'll just lock those up we're going to slice this line here and then we're going to offset oops that's a line sorry so we want this to be we're just going to make this one millimeter. Because Revit doesn't actually understand what it gauges, it, you have to kind of just work with what it knows. So one mil is about a standard gauge length, gauge depth, thickness, sorry. So uh, we're going to make sure we do this. And then make sure that you uh, you align and lock these lines here. And uh, don't do what I did here. Make sure you lock it to the right line. We're just going to create some parameters for the actual gauge. We can select all these and we'll make them one parameter. We'll call it gauge and it'll be a type parameter. So if we go to our front view now, we have our itty bitty stud here. So we're gonna stretch that up, lock it to these cutback lines here. Now you don't necessarily have to use reference planes, but I like to. I find that Revit responds better if you tell geometry to follow reference planes versus just giving the geometry a dimension. Um, so that's just a suggestion of mine. You don't have to do it the exact way I'm doing it, but this is the best way I found. So we'll go to consistent colors. So there's our nice generic colored stud. So what we want to do next is we want to give it a material. So we'll just go here to the materials inside the properties and we'll just pick something steel. Let's see what we got here. Mild steel, sure. And uh, we just want to make sure we use the rendered appearance. Okay, so that'll give that material to our stud. So select this again. And what we're going to do is we're going to actually create a material type parameter. And the reason we're going to do this is because you never know, like maybe we want to make this stud out of, you know, I don't know. I don't know, maybe we want to make it out of a different type of metal or painted or who knows. So we'll uh, we'll just name this stud material. And uh, we'll, we'll keep it as a type. Uh, and it should be fine. So the, whatever material it was before, it, that's what its default is. So we, we defaulted it as steel so it It'll all be steel for now. So that now this has a material. 
So the next step would be to probably create some types. So uh, maybe we're gonna have a six inch by one and five eighths. One and five eighths, 18 gauge. Actually we'll do 20 gauge. 20 gauge stud. And we'll maybe we'll make a two more. We'll call one three five eighths by one five eighths uh, twenty gauge stud. Then we'll make one more. We'll call it two and a half. Those are like the three most typical. So really, all you gotta do is just change the uh, the flange. Okay. I think that's pretty good. So we'll hit OK. Actually, you know what? Just so we can make sure that these work, we'll just flip through. Yeah, so that one works. Okay, perfect. Okay, so we'll uh, end the first video here. Uh, in the next video, we're going to go over how to create fine detail and medium detail studs. So we can see the rounded edges in one and the not rounded edges in another. Uh, we'll also go over how to create, change the type so that way it can show up as a stud member or sorry, I guess a structural member versus a generic model. And we will also go over uh, shared parameters, so how we can share this information with other uh, items, because I'm sure you're gonna need a track type in order to go with this stud type. So, see you in the next video.